All right, everybody, today we're coming at you with the Gervonta Tank Davis versus King Ryan Garcia, or Ryan King Rye Garcia. Garcia versus Davis, Davis versus Garcia, however you want to call it. We're going to be breaking down the fight and giving you my official prediction for the fight this weekend. Now, I don't normally do boxing predictions, but I did do a hype video on the channel about Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia, or Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia, which I will add in the description of this video if you didn't get the chance to check it out. But in doing a hype video, I feel like it's only fitting to go ahead and do a prediction video on this fight. It takes place this upcoming Saturday, and both fighters are undefeated. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know each fighter's records off the top of my head. Like, I'm not going to go into their opponents and everything like that. This is more just going to be a technical analysis of what I see inside the squared circle and who I think is going to be able to implement their game plan better over the 12-round fight. Look, I think that Ryan Garcia is going to have the speed advantage, and I don't think that's something that people are going to disagree with me on. He's going to have the speed advantage. I think the footwork advantage is going to go to Tank Davis. I think Gervonta Davis has the better footwork. I think his angle shifts, his ability to use lateral movement and to pivot off is a lot better than Ryan Garcia. And Ryan Garcia is a, a kid or a guy who just moves forward and likes to come on the pressure. But after he got caught by Luke Campbell, who was coincidentally another southpaw like Gervonta Davis, he seems to use the range management and controls the distance with the lead hand a lot better than he previously did. The getting caught by Luke Campbell, I feel like, made Ryan Garcia have to approach the fight game from a more cerebral aspect and have to approach it from a more technical side and not just rush in with the speed and the power that he has. Now, when it comes to the power, I think that Davis has more power in terms of one hit or quitter ability. But I also think that the speed of Ryan Garcia with the power that he has makes him a more powerful puncher than Tank. And that's what I'm going to say. I think overall power for power, I think you have to give the power advantage to Tank Davis. But in terms of speed, you know, precision beats power and timing beats speed. I think that the speed of Ryan Garcia is going to give his punches more power because it's going to be harder for Tank to see them. Now, when you look at a southpaw versus orthodox fighter, it's the, the battle of the foot positioning, right? When you break down those fights between two opposite stance fighters, whoever is able to get their lead foot on the outside of the lead foot of their opponent is the person who's going to have the most success because it's going to allow them to find the trajectory to land their power hand, which is their backhand, and be out of the range of the opponent's backhand, whether it's the southpaw throwing the straight left right down the middle and using the check right hook to get the outside foot and pivot off, or it's going to be the orthodox fighter using the jab and then the check hook to step to the outside of the lead right foot with their left foot and land the cross right down the middle and then pivot off to the side to be able to be out of the trajectory of that backhand because if the opponent wants to land that backhand, they're going to have to either take a step back and then angle off to be able to get the outside foot positioning of their own or they're going to have to turn into you as you're angling and pivoting off to be able to throw that backhand and it's going to be coming at an angle that isn't going to be as effective and it's going to be easier for the opponent to see and more awkward for the offensive fighter to be able to throw. But when it comes to breaking down the outside foot positioning, that's something that I think Ryan Garcia has a lot of issues with. If you go and watch some of his fights, a lot of the times he's able to land his 1-2, his jab cross. He's able to land his check hook. He's able to land his 1-3. He's able to land his cross hook. But for the most part, he's either stepping on the lead foot of the opposite stanced opponent or he's stepping inside the lead foot of the opponent. The one thing you don't want to do in boxing is to step inside the lead foot because if you step inside the lead foot of your opponent, you're giving the opponent the outside foot advantage automatically. Now, I know Ryan has a lot of speed. I know Ryan is very fast. He has really solid crosses. You saw that in the fight against Fortuna, I believe. The one to just throwing the right cross or yeah, just throwing the right cross from Orthodox over and over again. No setup, no wind up, just popping it in over and over. Just pop. But, but he was able to get it. He was able to throw it, you know, right straight out, straight back. You know, and I think that that speed gives him 
this aura of invincibility, and I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but I think it can give him issues in a fight against Tank because he's so used to being the faster fighter. And in this fight, I think he is faster. He's going to be faster than Gervonta Davis, but I think Gervonta Davis's footwork, his lateral movement, his ability to get that outside foot, his ability to pivot off, his ability to counter off the back foot... All of those things are going to give Garcia something that he hasn't necessarily seen before. And it's coming from a southpaw. Those fighters are historically difficult for fighters to fight. Whether it's southpaw versus southpaw or orthodox versus southpaw, the opposite stance fighter in terms of a southpaw versus an orthodox fighter is always historically harder to beat because you have to constantly be probing, you have to constantly be fencing that lead hand positioning and be fighting that lead hand in order to get that outside foot advantage to land the power shots that you're looking to throw. And Garcia is better with forward movement and better with overall speed of his punches and I think that his straight punches are better than Tank Davis but on the side of Tank he's better with his lateral movement he's better with footwork he's better with outside foot positioning he's better at shooting that punch right down the middle as he gets the outside foot and the fact that Garcia willingly gives up the outside foot positioning when he steps into range because he's so confident in his speed and his power that's going to be a problem against a guy in Tank Davis who has extremely good counters off the back foot if Ryan Garcia comes into this fight in over pressures due to overconfidence he's going to get caught with a big counter from Tank Davis he's going to get caught with that check right hook he's going to get caught with the straight left hand he's going to get caught with the right hook to the overhand left as he steps in especially if it's up against Against the ropes now in the same regard we've seen tank davis be pushed up against the ropes and he kind of high guards and he'll move his guard between body and head and kind of be able to pick off the shots as you're throwing them because he has good eyes but with the speed of ryan garcia i think that that's a problem because you don't want to get into the high guard positioning and you don't want to be guarded up against the ropes where garcia can trap you and let go with his ferocious speed and power I think the more technical fighter overall is going to be Gervonta Davis. I think the better counter ability is Gervonta Davis. I think the better left hook obviously is going to be Ryan Garcia. Or should I say the better lead hook is going to be Ryan Garcia. I think Gervonta is the much better overall fighter, but the speed the power and everything like that, or I shouldn't say everything like that, but the speed and power of Garcia is going to be something that I don't think Tank is necessarily accustomed to because I think Tank Davis is used to being the faster fighter and that's why he doesn't go on heavy volume. I think the volume is on the side of Garcia. He throws more punches in bunches, but sometimes if he overcommits and throws four, five, six, seven punches, he leaves his chin wide up in the air and he's just winging his left hooks, his uppercuts, his, his shots, and he's there for the counter, which is necessarily a big problem or which is evidently a big problem against a guy in Tank Davis who's so good with the pivot, so good with the angles, but so good with the counters off the back foot if Garcia is the the one pressuring. Garcia is going to have to play the matador a little bit in this fight. Or not the matador, but he's going to have to play on the inside and outside. He's going to have to play like he's sitting on a laundry line and you're moving the clothes down the line, right? So he's going to have to go forward and backward, forward and backward, in and out, rhythm step. He's going to have to be using that rhythm step and then and then cutting off on an angle. In out, step to the outside. In and out, in in out, in in out, out step to the outside in out in step to the outside the battle of the outside foot is good what's going to win this fight unless somebody gets caught with a big shot early i think that the early rounds of this fight go to ryan garcia 100 i think if the fight ends within the first three to five rounds it's because garcia was too fast for tank and he was able to catch him with a big shot if it ends later in the fight in the sixth seventh eighth ninth round that's going to be more on the side of the veteran who's fought the much better competition in Gervonta Davis. He's fought better competition. He's been in there with better fighters. He's had the, the vast experience advantage when it comes to breaking down this fight. And I think that the later the fight goes, Gervonta Davis is going to have the advantage due to the experience that he has. But the early rounds are a big problem for Davis against a kid like Garcia, who we know has the confidence, who we know is ready to come in there and put Tank Davis away. But let's look at similar issues that both Garcia and Davis have had and compare it to how it could play out in the fight against each other. 
when you look at a side of Ryan Garcia, or when you look at the side of Ryan Garcia, we'll obviously have to take a look at the, the Luke Campbell fight. Luke Campbell was able to step in. I believe it was an offbeat one and then a one-two, and he threw the jab from the right southpaw stance and came over the top with the left hand. Garcia was off balance. He, was, he had his chin up in the air, and he got clipped when he stepped in. Now, getting clipped against Gervonta Davis is another issue, and that's going to lead you to being put unconscious. So, Southpaw gave Garcia some trouble. Luke Campbell a Southpaw. He was able to get the outside foot, come inside, bang, land the overhand left, and hurt Ryan Garcia. Now, if you look at the side of Gervonta Davis and his issues, we've both these guys are undefeated. They've never lost a fight, but there are certain things you can look at. When you look at the side of Gervonta Davis, you look at the fact that he's been hurt by left hooks, rocked or stumbled multiple times in his career. And it was either from the left side or, or I'm sorry, either from the rear side or from the lead side. He's been hit with left hooks and it's mostly when he steps into range to throw that straight left hand and he moves his head off the center line, but he drops his lead hand. Garcia does it too, but I feel like Davis drops his hands more than Garcia does at this point in his career. I think Garcia is a little bit more dialed in. I think he's better at managing range at this point in his boxing career than he was earlier on. The earlier Ryan Garcia against the Tank Davis of now, I think Tank Davis would run right through Garcia. But the Garcia now, compared to the Davis of now, even though I do consider Davis to be the better fighter, we've seen Davis have issues with left hooks, whether it's from the lead side or the rear side stepping in, either him getting pressured and backed up or him stepping in to throw that straight left either to the body or to the head and trying to get his head off the center line. He drops that lead hand when he commits to the straight left or the overhand left, and that's a big weapon against the opposite stance Garcia because he can catch him with a left hook. And we've seen it before in his other fights where he has been caught with a left hook and that was in I forgot that was in the fight against Cruz he was in a fight with Cruz he threw a rear uppercut from the left side and then the right hook and as he threw the right hook his lead hand dropped and boom he was able to come inside of it was Cruz and land the hook inside the check right hook of Gervonta Davis. I think the speed of Garcia can catch the similar combination where if he goes for the 6-3, he might go to land the 6, but Garcia might brace for the 6 and then bang the left hook as he goes for his own right hook, at least on the side of Gervonta Davis. So we've seen Gervonta get caught with left hooks. We've seen him get caught with hooks on the inside of his wider punches. And also when he commits to the straight left to the body and the straight left to the head, he's been caught with left hooks. And with the speed and precision of Garcia, especially with that one punch that we've seen give Gervonta trouble, that is something you have to look out for. But then, like we said, with the Luke Campbell fight against the Southpaw, he got caught with his chin up in the air, left hook, a one, two, bang, bang, or a jab overhand, got caught with the left overhand and got dropped. We've never seen Davis get dropped, but we have seen him get hurt. This could technically be considered a 50-50 fight because even the issues that we've discussed, each fighter has issues in their own realm of boxing. And each fighter has issues with the weapons that either tank or or Garcia bring into this fight. Garcia has issues with weapons that Gervonta has bring, is bringing into this fight. And on the same side, Gervonta Davis historically has issues with left hooks from the rear or lead side, which is coincidentally Ryan Garcia's best weapon. I think this fight is extremely difficult to break down. And if you're 100% on either side, you're wrong. And I'm not saying your prediction is wrong, but you haven't broken down the fight enough to really give that type of analysis on it. But when I come into it, originally I was heavily on Gervonta Davis. I thought for sure he was going to beat Ryan Garcia. He was going to catch him. He was going to clip him. He was going to drown him in the deep waters, which I definitely think is possible. I think he can drown Garcia in the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, etc., etc. You know, the later rounds due to the experience and the competition level is definitely on the side of Gervonta Davis. The early rounds, the speed... And the precision of the left hook, which is coincidentally Ryan Garcia's best weapon, that's all on the side of Garcia. I would say this fight is 50-50, or close to 50-50 in terms of breaking it down when you break down each fighter's best weapons and things like that. Um, I, even with the experience advantage of Davis, I think you still have to take into consideration the speed and the precision of Ryan Garcia. But when it comes to a prediction, I'm going to go with Ryan Garcia. Originally, I was going to go with Davis, 
but I am going to go with Ryan Garcia. I, I just have seen that left hook, whether it's from the lead side with an orthodox fighter or the rear side with a southpaw fighter. I've seen that give tank issue so many times in the past. And even if you go on YouTube, you, you can, if you don't believe me, go on YouTube when you're done watching this video and look up Gervonta Davis rocked or Gervonta Davis dropped. A lot of the videos you're going to find are from him getting hit with a left hook from either the rear side in a southpaw fighter or the lead side in an orthodox fighter. And I think Gervonta is going to come in here. He's going to be ready. He's going to be more experienced. He's going to be the better fighter. But sometimes the better fighter doesn't always win. And I think that's what we have here. Gervonta Davis is a better fighter than Garcia. But Garcia has weapons that will give Gervonta trouble and some weapons that he's never seen before, even with the experience that he has. So I think Garcia will catch Tank Davis early. I think he's going to rock him. I think he's going to hurt him. I think there is a possibility that it does go to the decision, but I don't necessarily see that happening. I really don't. I think Garcia is going to catch him in the third or fourth round. I'll go with the fourth round. He's going to catch him stepping in with a left hook as he tries to land his own right hook, get right inside of the inside the arm, inside the range of Tank Davis. He's going to get that inside position. Bang, land that hook drop guard or drop davis and that'll be it so my pick is going to be king ryan garcia to defeat gervonta tank davis via fourth round tko